What is up guys, Tim Murray here. Today I'm going to be fixing, cleaning, and modifying my friend Squire Precision Bass. I'll then do some before and after sound demos, so stay tuned. So basically while jamming some music at my mate Adam's place, I found this old Squire Precision Bass in his guitar rack. I recall seeing the knobs being off axis and wondered what the problem was. I then noted a few other issues with it that I thought I'd be able to fix, because they were all relatively minor issues. So I asked Adam if he wanted me to take the bass back to my place. I'd order some replacement parts for it, give it a clean up, set it up, and give it back free of charge. I figured this would be a good way for me to develop skills in modifying and repairing instruments, and it also meant that I could give back to someone that is genuinely just an awesome dude, be it only a small gesture. Now this bass has taken a beating over the years. Here's a list of some of the problems I found. The pickup poles are a tad rusted and the pickups are sitting at a weird angle. There's build up on a fair few of the components. The pickguard is quite dirty. The fretboard has a bit of dirt on it and the frets need a polish. The back of the neck is seriously dirty. The volume and tone potentiometers are not held in place properly, so they wobble around a fair bit. The action is quite high and yet they're still buzzing on fret 14 and 19 on the D string. There is need for a new set of strings. There are quite a few dings to the paintwork in places. And finally, it looks like someone has used a heavily adhesive tape to attach a strap, rather than simply using the strap pins. I don't know. With all of the problems aside, the bass itself doesn't really emit any unwanted noise or scratches when turning knobs or playing. It keeps in tune, and the parts shouldn't really be too expensive to repair everything. However, I have immediately ruled out doing anything to fix the dings in the paintwork. This would mean sanding down parts to repaint or recoat, which is something that I'm not confident teaching myself on someone else's instrument. People seem to like relicking guitars recently anyway, so we'll just call it a genuine relic. Let's jump over to the parts and the plan. So the plan is to fully replace the pit guard rather than clean it. I spoke to Adam about this, and he liked the idea of putting a black pit guard on it anyway. So this saves the hassle of cleaning the old one, and it means the other one can be swapped out if he wants the weathered look. I'm going to place a new 1 meg potentiometer for the volume control, which will attenuate less of the high end from the pickups, making the tone brighter. If this is too bright, I can always drop down to a 500k pot I ordered for a guitar build I'm doing anyway. However, the idea behind making it sound brighter is that I can wire in a mini toggle switch to switch between two different capacitors for the tone knob. By being able to switch to a higher value capacitor, we'll be able to attenuate the high end more heavily, getting it back to that 250k pot rolled off tone anyway. This just gives the bass more tonal range. I also have a GraphTech Tusk nut that I can add to the bass if I run into issues with the string height or setup. I have a new set of Ernie Ball strings which I'll put on it, but not before cleaning as much of the instrument as I can. So let's get it done. Rather than bore you with me zoning in and working on this bass in silence, here's a couple of quick clips and some before and after sound demos. I'll explain what I got done after the clips, so enjoy.
So the base is all set up and done to the best of my ability with the time I had. So what did I do? Cosmetically, I of course replaced the pit guard with this three ply black pit guard, which I actually really like. It looks even better than I had thought it would in my opinion. I also had some leftover black dome knobs from my Warmoth six string base build. Check the video via the card up here. Hey, I actually pointed into the right corner. <laughs> So I chucked those on instead of putting the old flat silver ones back on. I've tried taking the tape residue off the base as much as I could with the cleaners I had, but there are still some left over. At least I managed to get most of it off. If anyone knows how to remove the rest of it without stripping the paint off, let me know in the comments below. From the previous clips, I mentioned the neck and fretboard were quite dirty, so I managed to sort that out for the most part. I actually used fine grade sandpaper for the back of the neck. I found a pack that was designed for old furniture restoration that worked really well. This took off the years of built up dirt and also smoothed out the neck, making it play a little faster than before too, so added bonus. In order to clean the fretboard I finally put my degree to good use. As in, I just used my old student ID card to scrape the gunk off the fretboard. Meh. Baby steps. This actually worked really well in removing most of the gunk. I then used very fine steel wool to polish up the frets a bit. Once this was all done, I used some lemon oil for the fretboard. This is designed for this application, not the full strength lemon oil. Don't do it. As for the setup of the instrument, I actually had some issues with the top two strings when I strung the bass up with the only ball strings. I couldn't tune the higher strings up to standard tuning without them feeling like they were about to snap from ridiculous tension. This really had me confused, as I was using a regular slinky pack, so tension wise it should have been fine. I wonder if it had something to do with the string tree or retainer on the headstock, which is required in order to keep the strings in the nut. This is all due to Fender's flat headstock design. These aren't required when you have an angled headstock like on my own basses. I fixed this issue by restringing it with Diodario strings that were a lighter gauge on the higher strings, but still decent enough for a drop D setup. Moving to the electronics, I installed the two alpha potentiometers with the 1 meg being for the volume and the 250k for the tone. The mini toggle switch works perfectly as intended with the tone knob effect becoming quite apparent when switched to the bigger capacitor. This wasn't as easy as I had initially expected and there were still a couple of things I left as is. I tried to clean the pickup poles using a couple of gentle techniques I had read on forums, but to no success. I also didn't get around to polishing any of the other metal parts fully, but managed to do a basic wipe down. With all of that aside, let's see what Adam thinks of it. Spanky yeah. shots, uh, get that pretty face in there, get some, get some extra views for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Swaggy. Sweet. 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 <laughs> that's so sick man, you've done such a nice job on that eh? <laughs> So that's all for today, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to ask me anything you think I could help with in the comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, and hit the subscribe button for more content like this, plus some original music, tutorials, covers and more. Thanks for watching, Timmy out. You mad I didn't do the chair thing this time? <laughs> <laughs>